How's it going folks? Winding up the aquaculture system here, or fish farm as I like to call it, um, just so I bring you along just for one final clip. Um, just excuse the lorikeets, they're having a bit of a biff over territory at the moment I think. Uh, might get a bit loud. Uh, all I'm pretty much we're going to do today is just give you a bit of a look through the system, just how it's standing at the moment. Um, look at the filters and whatnot, and the fish themselves and the messy bottom of the tank. So I keep getting people asking me if I can give them the plan so they can build their system the same as ours. Um, I'm not going to. I'll give you a diagram um, that shows you how I I did it. Um, no measurements, no nothing like that, just to show you the pipe placements and I'll also put big red X's where I think I've made mistakes. I'm no aquaculture expert. Um, if, if I had my time again and if I had the money um, I'd probably buy a drum filter to tell you the truth just to look after some of the filtration, the fine solids and that sort of thing. Um, but this was just a DIY jobby using barrels and IBCs that we could buy locally fairly cheaply um, just to have a crack and see if I could do it. Um, and also to I've had a couple of people ask me if they can have plans so they can upscale it for a commercial venture. Uh, for you guys who do want to go commercial um, and you've got 50 grand to spare, um, seriously, I do suggest you spend a bit of coin, um, hop onto the interwebs, look up Earthen Group online or Earthen Edge, um, and join Mr. Paul Van's website. He's uh, one of the industry leaders, not only here in Australia but internationally. Um, and have a look what he's got to say about setting up small um, aquaculture systems commercially and aquaponics as well. He's got a few really good articles that goes through the, the bare bones basics of what you need to understand before you start shelling out, you know, 50 grand to build a shed and whatnot. So I won't spruik him too much. I just do think he's a very honest, genuine bloke. And yeah, he, he's helped a lot of us uh, backyarders out there. So it doesn't hurt to pass the love along, I don't think. Uh, anyway, I'll pretty much will leave it there. Um, I'll give you a bit of a look through the filters and um, also too a look at the fish and whatnot. Um, and yeah, at the end I'll show you pretty much all what the fish look like and weigh up to. So here we go, the end of the aquaculture system. So there you go folks, there's one final look at the system. Just the fish tank, we've got the radial flow filter at the front there. And then the uh, bio filter of sorts and then the sump tank up the end um, just down the bottom here i'm just using the valve or the tap down the bottom to so i can pump out half the water um, and that water is going up underneath the house and out through the drain system the reason for that is i've been using sodium bicarbonate to um, balance the ph in the system so yeah i don't want a lot of sodium going down into my wicking beds uh, where it'll accumulate or even onto the lawn so it's just going straight out the drain um, I'll just give you a bit of a look in the different filters. Up here, radial flow, still doing its job. Um, it's not getting cleaned all that often actually, with only um, 8 to 10 fish in there. We've noticed we don't accumulate a lot of solids. In here we have the bio filter, pretty much all the same setup as we had before. Um, we've just got the three layers of matting, we've got the black, rough, then we have a um, medium mesh, the yellow or filter, and then we have a fine grey down the bottom, the blue there. And then we have the um, PEO3 K1 style, coldness style uh, bio media, and that's just for the bacteria to live on. Um, just over here in the sump tank, that elbow there coming in from the bio filter, that's pretty much all just to set a, um, the low point of water in the bio filter. Seems to be doing its job. Um, and down the bottom there is just the line out to the pump, a little red one there. And over here we did have a float valve at one time when I had a top-up tank just sitting here where these fish tanks are at the moment. So, And then from there the water comes out the pump, up this pole here and then through a UV filter. That UV filter just knocks off any algae and from there we're going over into the fish tank. Just over here with the Venturi I've added a bit of a muffler. It's just a drink bottle that goes over the top. Um, did find it was getting rather loud there. Um, so yeah, that just helps to quieten the whole system down. Um, this line here is just the emergency backup air goes down to a stone. Um, I'll turn the pump off now and I'll give you a bit of a look at um, the fish before we start to drain the tank. So there you go folks, there's a look at the fish. I think there's nine in there I just counted. Um, you can still see the deposits over there in the back corner. I'm cleaning them out every two to three weeks, um, just vacuuming them out with a, um, what do you call it, a little siphon pipe. 
Um, the solids basically are just sitting there. The water comes down in this corner here and there seems to be a bit of a dead spot down there. Uh, the slow or solids lifting outlets over here on this side. So yeah, that's one of the design flaws I'd have to address if I was to build another one, which I'm not, but I'll just mention that. So anyway, I'm gonna start draining the water out and um, yeah, I'll start catching a couple of fish. So I'm just pumping this out till it's about quarter full and then um, it'll just make it, the fish a lot easier to catch, a little bit less stressful for them. So what I'm going to do is take these guys out in one hit, um, use Icky Genie to dispatch them, and then pop them in a pot full of salt water before I scale and clean them. Number one. Oh, got three in one that time. Just with this one here, um, just to show you the icky jimmy. There's a line on the um, jade perch here, just on the top of the gill plate. Just put the spike in straight into the brain, give it a twist around, and that's pretty much well lit. They do a bit of a, um, a flare of their top fin, um, and that's pretty much well lit. So I'm just draining out the radial flow filter, just onto the rocks there. Um, but just in case the sodium is so great it's going to poison the grass, I really don't want it out there. I'd rather it flood here and kill any grass that's trying to come up under these rocks. There's a little bit just down here in the corner I wouldn't mind being knocked on the head. So I'm just going to remove all the pipework from these drums and the IBC, take off the sarking that's around the outside. I don't need that anymore, that's just the insulation, the silver insulation. And yeah, basically break it down into components for storage. Definitely needs a good hose out first, otherwise it's going to stink in a couple of days. Just to give you a look at how dirty these filters are, this matting, uh, it's pretty tragic. It definitely needs to be cleaned out um, often, so that's another reason why I think the drum filter is the way to go. To show you down here, this stuff is extremely mucky, very dirty, a lot of fine solids coming through. Definitely not something you want your fish um, swimming around in. Another reason I think, you know, a drum filter, if you're serious about this and you want to get a constant flow of fish through a system, a drum filter is the way to go, just to look after all those fine bits. So, just shake all this off. Just down in here, this stuff here, it's pretty much all been sitting as a static pack filter for oh, a couple of months now, well and truly three or four months. And you can see there's not a lot of bacteria on there, growing on there. Um, it, there's enough media in here to look after a hundred fish all up. Um, that's the way I set it up. I think there's roughly around about 95 to 100 litres of this PEO3. All I'm going to do with this stuff is pretty much all scoop it out. Put it into a tray, hit it with a hose, blast off any of the, um, the muck on there and then just let it dry out and yeah, it'll just be bagged up for um, use in another system later. So what i got here is just a little 4 litre or 1 gallon, I think-ish, um, ice cream container just with a whole heap of holes in the bottom of it and I'll use this to scoop the media out. Just lets me grab it and let the majority of the water empty out back into the filter. Makes it a lot easier for later. How's this for bizarre folks? I seriously just found a compost worm in the filter there. I have no idea how that's gotten in here whatsoever. Seriously, because we were throwing a couple of worms in for the um, fish to feed on. So unless it's one of those fellas and he made it through into the filter. But yeah, I'll go pop him down into an aquaponic grow bed, I think. Good size on him. Right yeah, so I found that worm and it got me thinking. Worms like to um, crawl through matting and material. So I pulled the filter matting out and I can't see any worms. But what I have found is cocoons. That there is a compost worm cocoon. They're under the matting. The worm has laid cocoons in here. So when it comes time, to um, empty out the sludge in the bottom of this, I'm definitely going to be seeing if there's any more um, compost worms in here. These cocoons here, I'll cut them out and I'll throw them into the garden. So I've given this a good shake up to get it here. Uh, just tip him over now, see what we find. Actually don't know if that's the best angle for you, let's see. Just bring us around at another angle. There's more cocoons there, I've just seen a whole heap come out. 
with no more worms. Well, that's a real conundrum. Ah, oh, there we go. There is one more worm in there. Well, I'll be. So, let's move this media out. Out of that media, matey. So there is another compost worm. And there are some rather large eggs. That one actually looks like it's got a little worm coming out of it. I don't know if you can make it out. And the phone rings. So I've found six cocoons and two compost worms. So, oh no, that looks like a squash cocoon there. I dare say these guys are um, lucky escapees from the fish from when we've thrown a couple in. And they've set up shop in the biofilter. So anyway, I'm just gonna go and toss these into a grow bed in the aquaponics, I think. So there you go, folks. There's the inside of the radial flow filter. And as you can see, rather mucky down the bottom there. So I'm going to give this one the same treatment. I'm going to tip it out over the yellow matting just to see if there's any compost worms in there because that was a lot of cocoons for just two. Anyway, I'll give it a bit of a hose out and we'll have a look and see what I find. So I, I don't think somehow I'm going to find any more compost worms, but it's worth looking anyway. Oop, there's one. There's a nice big red one. I don't see any more over there. So there you go. If you feed your fish compost worms, it's quite likely they're going to set up and colonise your system. I never would have expected that. Anyway, I'll stop playing in fish muck. And I'll take this little fella <laughs> over to the aquaponics. So there you go folks, the system's all pulled apart just behind me here. Um, it was a pretty easy job. Um, a lot of the, the fittings were um, either pushed through uni seals, so they've been saved. Um, some of the larger 50mm um, pipe work was actually pushed into fittings using some Teflon tape just to create a nice watertight seal. Um, anything that pretty much will have gravity and not any um, weight or pressure on it, I pretty much will just um, sealed up that way using the plumber's tape. Um, on some other positions, noisy lorikeet, in some other um, positions I used, or, or with other fittings, sorry I should say, I did use the Teflon tape and also a 316 stainless steel screw. That just helps keep it in place, um, the, the pipework in place inside the fitting, uh, just to stop it from being knocked out. And also too, the, you know, the hose clamps, they always help. Yeah, the, the fish, dispatching the fish, sorry I didn't get a better camera angle on the Ikijimi, um, but if you want to check out my other clip, and there's also a link to the Ikijimi um, website in the description below, that'll give you a better idea on how you dispatch the jade perch at least. Um, also too, when it came time to scaling and dressing them up, um, unfortunately um, I thought I'd press record, but I hadn't. Uh, but I will show it in um, clips coming up. I mean, we've got a load more fish to do. When it came time to do the group photo, unfortunately, I already dressed one of them up, so I've only got eight to show you. The weights, though, were anywhere between 450 grams, which is a pound or just under a pound, all the way up to a pound and a half or 700 grams. So pretty happy with the weight there. They, the intention was to grow them out to 500 grams um, within 12 months. It's been 18 months they've, since they went in. Um, but we had a couple of hiccups on the way where I cut back feed and whatnot, so all teething problems with um, building a system you've got no idea on how to run, I suppose. So there you go, there's a bit of a look at the end of it. Don't hold your breath for the, um, the clip or the blog post on how this one went together. I've got a lot on my plate at the moment, um, outside in the real world other than YouTube, so I may not get to it um, very quickly. Also too, my good video camera died during the filming of this, so I'm back to using the dodgy um, digital SLR. Actually, it's not bad, it's a Canon. It's a good camera, um, just the colors don't come out too well in this one. I'm looking very anemic in the viewfinder at the moment, so it might be a while until I um, post another decent clip. Sorry about that guys, you're just going to have to put up with the washed out colours. Um, but I think that is pretty much all it. So if you've been following this system build from the start, I hope you've enjoyed the clips and you've picked up a few tips here and there. Uh, if this is the first one of our videos you've seen, feel free to hit that subscribe button and you'll get a lot of noisy lorikeets. Uh, you'll also get um, an email every time we post a clip. It might be on the aquaponics or the chickens or wicking beds. Something going on in our urban farm here. And you can come along and check out what's going on. Um, also too, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, as always, leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Hope everyone is well and happy and I'll catch you next clip.
Cheers, folks. Um, I, I think I did have it over. Excuse the lorikeet. You right there, fellas? They're biffing right above my head. I don't think my video camera is supposed to make this noise. <laughs>